I scrolled around the internet to find five common mistakes that I saw creative entrepreneurs making on their websites. Stay tuned to find out if you are making one of these five and how to fix it. Hey guys, welcome back. This is episode 43 here on the Ashlyn Writes channel. I'm Ashlyn, I'm a calligrapher and a copywriter and I help creatives like you sell more with your words because I want you to work from more of a place of rest and less of a place of hustle. If you haven't yet, hit subscribe. You will be first to know when these videos drop every single week. You'll also wanna click that bell icon. That way you will be alerted when they come out. Your website is the front door to the digital presence of your online business. It's the calling card that you put out there, that hand outstretched to shake someone else's and get to know them. But don't be worried. Along with those five mistakes, I'm gonna give you five makeover tips that you can employ on your website. Now, I hope that you find these tips helpful for a quick weekend warrior update for your website's copy, but if you have a little bit more time, I created a free checklist for you. Look down below and you can grab 44 questions that your website needs to answer. That may help you get a little more done when it comes to your website copy. Okay, I'm gonna kick things off here with something that even when it came to my business, as somebody who studied copy and communications, I went down kicking and screaming over. I can tell you exactly where I was turning left on Piedmont Road here in Atlanta when I was listening to a podcast and I heard somebody really, really talking about niching down and speaking to one person. That's a business strategy that I'm sure that you've heard before, but when I really thought about applying it to my own business, I thought that sounded absolutely crazy. But I was wrong. You're a business owner, not a freelancer. It's okay to get really specific. And specifically, it's okay to get specific when it comes to your website's copy. It's kind of a linchpin rule of copywriting, but when you're writing in your business, you wanna to speak to one reader, with one idea and one offer, okay? Now, again, you may have heard this idea before and truly this is a bigger business idea than what we can just unpack in this video, but I wanna kick off the conversation. Even if you've heard this and you think you apply it in other facets of your business, when it comes to your website words, are you talking to one reader with one idea and one offer at a time? When you talk to that one ideal client or customer on your website, that's when they get to have that how did she know what I was thinking moment in their head? And that's what we want. Let's look at the makeover example of this done well. For this example, I wanted to show you a little bit of my student Kelby's website. She is a, well, I'll let you see what kind of photographer she is based out in the Western parts of the United States. So let's have a little scroll and see. She was a student inside Copywriting for Creatives. And so this is her, these are her words. She wrote this herself. Uh, but what I want you to see Boom, here she goes. She starts being really specific. She works with brides, she works with seniors. And then within these copy snippets here, she's gonna speak these words very specifically to these people and to seniors. I mean, hey girl, that's perfect for an 18, 17 year old girl. Um, so I really like how she does that. And then even on through her website with other things she's directing them to, she's really clear about how to communicate and how to market to those kinds of people. Kelby's not trying to be the photographer, even if she can take great photos of family portraiture and babies or whatever, she is getting so specific on who she talks to and she's calling it out. She's not just letting the images say weddings or seniors, but she's saying it with her words as well. And that's what I wanted you to see. Mistake number two, it's too much text and my eyes hurt. Raise your hand if you have heard that people don't read on the internet anymore. Okay, here's the thing, people will read on the internet if it's interesting or fairly easy to read, but the minute it looks clunky, it's hard to read, or it's just boring, people won't read it. When I was looking around, the problem that I saw were that there were entire chunks of text on your website that I can't wade through and find my way out on the other side. So you lose me somewhere in the middle. Just as a rule of thumb, if you think a paragraph is too long and chunky on your website, then your reader probably is not going to read the whole thing either. Now in the blog that goes along with this video, I unpacked some studies about eye mapping and reader user testing and a lot of other nerdy things. I'm not gonna get into that again right here in this video, but that that's there if you wanna read it, I'll link it below. Essentially, just run a test. The next time you hop on a website, kind of be aware of your eyes as you read the copy on the website. Watch how you jump around. Watch how you read the first part of the sentence and it kind of loses you after that. 
This is natural. This is the way that our eyes read on the internet, but just be aware of that. So are you ready for the makeover example? This is my client, Julie Solomon's Pitch It Perfect course and product. Um, it is specifically for influencers and bloggers and teaches them how to move from one-off paid to post content to long-term brand collaborations. Uh, so what I want you to see, so this is as a sales page. I think this one's around 5,000 words. I typically write 5,000 word sales pages, uh, but what I want you to see, obviously that's so much text, right? But how easy is it to get through? Um, she has broken it up um, by giving those bullets. You know, I suggest these things in the copy, but as far as the design, they, they did that. They have their header one, header two copy. Um, even these columns, uh, we broke up and did, what I want you to see specifically is, I don't care about the grammar police. I don't want you to care about them either. These are kind of one sentence paragraphs. This one's, I think the longest at like three, but it's all broken up. Like we even started this one with an ellipsis. Like, so on and so forth, you'll see how copy is just so broken up. There's no big text chunks. That's what we want to do. It just make it so much more bite-sized for people to read. And kind of like I just told you, there's going to be different ways that people read websites. Um, not everybody's going to read every single word of this the first time they're here, but once they're really thinking about the product and making that purchase, they probably will come back and read some more of the words. So that's okay. Again, people want to read things that... Um, They'll read things that are long, but as long as they're interesting, as long as they're fun to read, as long as it's easy to kind of work through the content and read. So that is what I wanted to show you here in this example of Julie's Pitch It Perfect product. Mistake number three, you're being too woo-woo with your brand voice. Okay, confession, I enjoy talking about brand voice. I talk about it on podcasts all the time. I created an entire freebie workbook on it, and I created an entire quiz about it. I'll link the workbook and the quiz below, but lean in for a second. Sometimes I think we get a little too fixated on finding our brand voice when it's so important, just as important for us to figure out our audience's voice. So voice is the impression or the tone that your readers get when they are interacting with your captions, your blogs, and your content. You know how you are able to instantly recognize a friend or a loved one's handwriting when you see it on a thank you note or a grocery list? It's kind of the same way with your brand voice. It's gonna be that thing that instills trust with your readers. But what's so important is that we marry that brand voice of yours with the things that your audience is already saying. As a copywriter, I switch voice all the time. I did it in corporate when I was switching from brands like Delta Airlines to Chick-fil-A, very different. But I also do it now as I switch from clients like Jenna Kutcher to Desiree Hartstock Bridal to Beth Kirby of Local Milk. And my students were asking me, how do you find a voice and how do you switch between it so quickly? So I had to think about it. What was I actually doing? But I boiled that process down to six steps. And again, you can get your hands on that how to find your brand voice freebie if you look below. But here's where we need to park and camp out for a sec. Again, it is a combination on your website. It's like a Venn diagram. Your words, but also your audience's words. Let's look at a makeover example of this. So on this example, what I want you to know as background, this is uh, my students, Michaela and Ashley. Uh, they host the Bloom Workshop. And to, again, give you this background on them, they are a little bit sassy, which I love. Um, but I want you to see how that comes across in their copy. Yes, they are absolutely uh, serving uh, women in the creative industry. And what they didn't want to come across is fluffy and you know, way too emotional. They wanted to be themselves in this. But I want you to see how they marry that with the things that are going on in their client or customer's head. Um, I guess it would be their customer in this sense because they would be workshop attendees. So even right up here at the beginning in the header copy, we went with something that's a little bit more um, straightforward, right? We're not just gonna, we're not gonna be fluff. We're not gonna uh, cupcake this right at the beginning. So we're gonna get straight to it. Um, and again, they wrote this copy. So I guess I helped coach them through it, but I'm gonna say them because they did it. Uh, but even as we get down in here, they are, their SAS comes through. Um, they're not, they're not trying to sugarcoat things all the way. So that's what I want you to see as much as they give their, what they want to come across. They did a beautiful job of marrying that with how, uh, their client or their customer actually wants to sound the things that they want to hear, but they married that again with their voice and their sass. So this whole website is done really well from the start here page, kind of their about page of sorts, um, so wanted to give this as another example that you can check out.
great combination of voice being that overlap of what their customers want to hear and what Michaela and Ashley actually sound like. Mistake number four, all of your testimonials are hidden on one page of your website and what if I never click over there? So this one makes me kind of sad because I did find examples of a lot of websites that have incredible glowing reviews and testimonials, but they're all stuffed on one page of the website. I'm not telling you that you can't have one dedicated page to reviews and testimonials. In fact, that can be done beautifully. HubSpot has an article out there where they find about six examples of this done really well. But what I want to encourage you to do is see how you can grab those copy snippets and weave them in and out of your your other marketing collateral in your business. For example, I wanted to take you behind the scenes of my, I guess not behind the scenes, this is the scenes. This is what you'll see if you go to my friend Shana Skidmore's website. Uh, she's a client and on Shana's website, this is the first page. So I want you to see here that she already brings us some testimonials. When we scroll down, we're gonna see lives changed and we're gonna see faces and see names. We're also going to go ahead and get um, these real stories, real results. There we go, is this photos loading? Um, and she goes on and we have more and more copy to describe what's going on here. So these are fabulous, obviously, but what I want you to see is it doesn't end here and it doesn't end on just one page somewhere, but you can even click over to her about page and we will see testimonials there. So I just want you to get used to the idea that these testimonials that you have don't just have to be on one or two pages of your website. Go ahead and see how you can work them in to every single page. Look at this, it's gonna hop through all of those. We've got all of these faces, these results. And this is so good, oh look, we know that face. Um, but yeah, it's she's, she's brought it throughout her entire website and included testimonials everywhere. So that's what I wanted you to see here. Mistake number five, you're following a best practice that you've never really tested before in your own business. How many times do you hear you're supposed to be doing something a certain way on your website or in your captions or your blogs or even your email newsletter and when you do the opposite thing uh, good things happen it actually works better so this past spring i was at the copywriter club in real life event in new york and one of the speakers said this online best practices are usually pooled ignorance amen right i know that i've seen that at play at times from different things in my business and even copywriting rules bottom line it's kind of like that quote i'm sure you've heard it before you've got to know the rules like a pro so you can break them like an artist i will happily give you all the copywriting rules and techniques that i can but at the end of the day the power is in your hands you're the boss you're the ceo and it's up to you to test and see what actually works with your audience because the right best practice at the end of the day is going to be what your readers and your audience resonate with the most here is another sales page this is for my client and sweet friend jenna kutcher uh so for this sales page this is a rewrite that i did of a sales page that had worked great but this one worked so good that we had a half a million dollar launch. So what I want you to see is um, this used to be more of the copy that was in the lead. Um, and this was not really even here. Like it said the photo lab up at the top, but we started it with this. I'm gonna show you that because um, especially if you're a sales copywriter, it sometimes is better to start with that question that kind of zeroes in and um, attracts or repels people, right? We want to make sure that we know who we're talking to, uh, but we ended up changing it out and going with this. And when this copy read this way, um, this was the, that was the lead of the sales page. Um, there was a lot of copy that changed on this, but I just want to give that as one example. Sometimes the thing that you know, quote unquote, best practices say you should do the way you should write the copy, the thing that you should lead with. Um, we found this worked better because it ended up being um, higher converting at this point. So uh, there's obviously lots of different variables that go into things like this, but I'm just showing you that as an example of something to think about. Um, we That's a little rule breaking right there and it's okay to break the rules, uh, see what works. Uh, the numbers don't lie and go with that. I want to hear from you. Let me know in the comments below, but what other website writing tips do you want to know? I would encourage you to have a weekend warrior sesh of your own with your website words. Use these five tips that I gave you and see if you're making any of these five mistakes. Now also, don't forget to look below and grab that freebie checklist, 44 questions that your website words need to answer. As always, thank you so much for your time and for tuning in today. Give this video a like if you don't mind, if you found it helpful, and I'll see you back next week for an all new training.